Spotify playlist study finds major labels have most influence. The details. A consulting firm called Music Tomorrow published a study where major labels accounted for nearly 70% of the music featured in the New Music Friday playlist on Spotify. So New Music Friday is the probably one of the most broad and let's call it solicited. Now, what I mean by solicited is, is I've explained this in the past, but major labels and the big distributors find the people who make the choice of who these songs are on and they push them to give them placements. Basically, if you're on New Music Friday, it means one, any money you're paying for that salary is coming right back into you with royalties. And then two, it really has an effect on breaking artists. And that's what their job is to do. So it makes a lot of sense for them to do it. It makes sense that you're going to see a playlist like that have a lot of that. I thought this was pretty interesting. Of that number, 30% was Universal Music Group, while 19% for Warner and 19% for Sony. Universal has been pretty much killing it in the major label sphere. So that's not that shock. Some people would think is like, wow, it's that much more than the other labels. But truly, I actually think that it's shocking that they're not a little bit more ahead than them. But yet again, this kind of goes back to the thing of the soliciting. So when you're trying to keep three relationships happy, well, you're giving each of them probably an outdo share than as opposed to their market share of what is actually on the charts. The major labels share of new music on Spotify playlists like Rap Caviar and Get Turned were even higher in the same period. 86% of new music added to those playlists are from artists represented by major labels. Today's top hits and pop rising playlists saw 80% of their content come from major labels. Okay, so these are the biggest playlists on this platform, no doubt about it. So part of why this I don't think is shocking is these playlists really are not where you're going to see an artist who's not established already get added. This is the place for somebody who's really, really, I wouldn't say a household name yet, but they're getting pretty solidified in the genre. It's not going to be your first song that's going to get added here right away. You're going to get added to some of the smaller playlists. And so, you know, in a recent video, the one I did on chart metric, I showed how chart metric have these amazing playlist journeys. In fact, here I can show it. So the playlist journeys, of course, and if you didn't watch my video on chart metric, shame on you, you're able to see that some playlists people get on first and then they end up on it. Whereas you could also see if you click, look ahead where after they're on a playlist where they end up. So it's an interesting thing that like, yes, rap caviar, you got to be on a ton of other playlists. And then by the time you get there, if you're a new artist, you probably need to have had that song's going to probably be too old to get on there. So it's going to be your next single. If that's hot gets on there. And so then of course, if you have hot singles, you're probably getting pursued by a and R, especially if it's that big in that genre, they're signing people really fast. So that'll all make sense. But the one thing I want to say that I think is like a little inaccurate about the headline is, yes, that's true in those big playlists, but like a lot of the other playlists on, that Spotify does, that still is not the case. Like they have so many of these playlists that are all about showcasing unknown artists. So here's a good example. This is the playlist I listen to the most on Spotify. It's called Hyperpop. And as you can see, Warner Music has 6% of it. Sony has 1.82%, which is two whole tracks of the playlist. And the same thing with UMG. And then all of this is mostly DIY artists using their own labels. A couple of them like PCA Music and Dog Show have a few different artists. But truly, some of these genres, here's the pop punk is not dead. So when you look, Pure Noise, which is probably one of the bigger indies of the genre, has just about as enough as as much as uh, Hopeless Records, which control of Warner, or at least under distribution of Warner. I mean, actually, it says 12% total versus 11.25% total. So, like, it's pretty negligible, and then it's a lot of DIY stuff. So I think it's pretty interesting that there still is huge genre playlists that this is not the case, that it's all major label. Uh, it's more that just this is always an amorphous thing and that every genre changes over depending on what really it is that is the dynamic of the genre. Because at the end of the day, these playlists, they have to keep people listening. And if the major labels aren't serving them the fresh stuff, like in Hyperpop, you know, it's just not a genre where major labels are signing up artists like crazy. So that's why you see it's funny because like really big beat in Atlantic do a lot of the signing in that genre. So you see so little representation there because that's just not where the labels are at yet. And so this 
playlist is actually probably one of the least solicitous playlists you'll see. So here's the, the most interesting part of this article that kind of contradicts the uh, headline. As of 2022, Spotify curates about 5,000 frontline official playlists, which were assessed in the study. Music Tomorrow notes that the winds of fortune may be changing for indie artists. Currently, April 2022 is an outlier in their data, with New Music Friday featuring 63% tracks from non-major labels. That's a shift from previous months where releases from indie artists barely broke through 30% of the content featured on New Music Friday playlist. So if you're not following that thread, they're actually saying that Spotify is changing its ways a little bit and start fresh finds. I think it's actually interesting that they're trying to go a little bit more DIY indie. And this is another thing too. So like I have a team and like one of the girls who does some work for me, we noticed the thing, and this is why we took back our anti pre-save stance that we started to see a lot more artists get added at the two to three week mark. Now you can actually see this. We studied this in chart metric. So here's an interesting thing. Track age before the playlist and the hyper pop one, zero to one week. And then there's some here, but there's almost nothing added in the ones, the six months range or the six months range. Whereas this playlist track age before playlist, like a lot of this is it's a slow moving playlist. It waits for like artists to get hype around their music. All these playlists are a little bit different here in that respect of like how fast they add tracks. A lot of this, if you want to get added to them, it's about building up those streams and your consistent sustained promotions. Yet again, this is another reason why this is in that $10 a month chart metric plan. And you can see all this data. And if you're targeting certain playlists, you can adjust your strategy accordingly since it's so much different from genre to genre.